Hey everyone, this is my Patreon powered reaction to the 22nd episode of Love Hina. Now, in the last episode, I believe we had a date between Keitaro and Naru, as well as between Keitaro and Mutsumi, who felt left out and jealous and wanted a date with Keitaro as well. Of course, Naru had issues with that, so she kind of messed up that date a little bit there. There were some boat shenanigans and crashing and stuff like that. And we also had Naru's little sister, who seems like she's come here to retrieve Naru, basically. So I guess that's a, a conflict we'll get into this episode, so let's do that. 3, 2, 1, play. Of course, Naro's not gonna leave. I mean, what better place can you find to live aside from the Hinata apartments? I mean, it doesn't get much better than that if you're anyone by Keitaro. And even then, even then, if you're a little, at least a little bit of a masochist, then Keitaro's position there is fine. You know, Sue seems to be, like, constantly happy. Aside from the few times when she has some plot-relevant stuff going on. Guys never cease to creep me out, you know that? Yeah, little sister May. So, you know, she'll be fun to deal with. She really does look a lot like Naru, <laughs> like a smaller Naru. She puts glasses upside down. Kind of an invasion of privacy, you know. You know, if that bothers you at all, which I guess it maybe it doesn't. <laughs> uh, not wrong. <laughs> of course he dreams about Naru. I'm sure she's completely naked in his dreams as well. <laughs> of course, one girl's on Ephraim in his dreams. In what way? You have no idea what you're talking about, Naru. Apparently you don't. <laughs> oh, okay, I gotcha. So you can... But yeah, in this scene, she looks a little bit less like Naru than she did in the previous scene. Okay, why? She had like an hair at the family business or whatever? Because otherwise, I think it's kind of important. Does she? <laughs> yeah, only Kitaro is allowed to be hit by Naru. Of 
Because it's like one of the most prestigious schools in Japan. <laughs> Well, there she goes. And I know they're trying to make it seem like a big deal. She was about to slap her sister, but, you know, in a show with comical violence, like punching Kitaro into the sky, it's really hard to take that too seriously. Wow, that <laughs> hairstyle. Much better hair now. Everything. <laughs> uh, well, she should. Her older sister is very violent. Very temperamental. Very moody. <laughs> well, I guess we got a smile there. <laughs> uh, wow. These two. So rude. Of course, they gotta continue with that. I doubt those are what those are. Oh, I guess she wasn't kidding, but she was just a bit young. A bit too young to really enjoy it. That yellow creature, didn't we see like dancing versions of that in the opening? Ah. Uh. I mean, she probably heard her, so, you know. So is Naru okay with having that secret passage in her room? You know, she wasn't too happy about the floor pole. Well, she's difficult to get along with. She's definitely not her little sister. See, you're fantasizing about Mutsumi, nice. Yeah, it's almost like they were related to each other somehow. Apparently. Well, obviously she was been there when she was a kid. What? There's nothing to be bugged about. Mutsumi is great. They're probably doing lewd things. Don't worry about it. Oh, is she locked in somehow? <laughs> or did somebody deliberately lock her in? Why? Oh, right. Okay, I got you now. I get it now. She wants them to have alone time. <laughs> uh, she's not getting in. <laughs> I don't think that's quite possible. She's a bit too old to be their child. Uh, oh, trying to make it so hot that she starts to strip. I guess that's fine. First, I would go with the strategy of making it so cold they would want to cuddle, but I guess that works. Oh, uh, what are you saying, Kitaro? Don't be silly. You should encourage this behavior, not discourage it. Yeah, girls do that to you. <laughs> oh, now I know you're losing it. Yeah, how dare you try to study in there. Indeed.
About to have sexy times and then Naro shows up. I'm sure that's a big part of it, yeah. I don't think it's quite that simple, but I guess it's your only plan of action. <laughs> wow. He seems to know her pretty well already. Which would be Mitsune. Food, I... Sounds like fun. Well, I can't wait that long. Yeah, so take so take them off, all of them. Oh wow. Why? <laughs> Why? Oh, that's not fair at all. <laughs> Competing on outfits there. Yeah, making Naru as un unattractive as possible and making Mutsumi as pretty as possible. <laughs> Could not be. <laughs> Could be a bit more subtle than that. <laughs> not to say you're not cute or anything. Wow. Okay, you're being really way too on the nose now. Generally. <laughs> uh, he's a child, all right. <laughs> Very specific question. Yeah, man, those glasses are just too much. Ooh, turtle soup. No, leave Tama alone. She's a turtle. <laughs> yeah, nobody's attached to any of the potatoes. Just dodging the question. A turtle? Oh. Ugh. That's disgusting. <laughs> Of course you did. Is that friend Naru? Do they have a connection like that? Because that would make sense with that spinning shot on the opening, holding hands back to back if they were childhood friends as well. That's interesting. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, I think those are the things we saw dance in the opening. Oh no, you might want to run, but there's nowhere to go in that blizzard. Uh, okay. Yeah, it seems a bit, a bit dark. Yeah, never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> uh, no, you can't. You can eat snow cones, though. <laughs> okay, now we're on an adventure. <laughs> okay. How dare they? Oh, willing to pay, pour some sake? Maybe it's not too bad after all. Well, yeah, it seems like she was childhood friends with Naru as well, and you probably knew that at once upon a time. <laughs> uh... You know, not everyone wears their emotions on their sleeve.
Like your dream of marrying Keitaro, for instance. Okay. It probably is her. Of course. Back when Kitaro was a kid, and Nara was a kid, and... Although Nara would be younger than, even younger than them back then, so... Don't cut yourself. Careful. What did I just tell you? Let me suck on your finger instead. <laughs> That's a cute little reaction there. <laughs> you want me to kiss it and make it feel better? Don't forget it, me. We need to make progress on this. Yes, so he, he wants to go there with you now. He actually said it. I'm a little bit impressed, actually. I wouldn't go that far, but you can have more than one reason, you know. That's not how it works. It's not a zero-sum game like that. Yes? Why are you acting like that's a problem? You can have more than one reason and motivation for something. <laughs> wow. You're really unreasonable sometimes, Naru. Uh, let me guess, May's not supposed to actually be here. Get a conversation with a mom or dad there. What? Yep, that would be them. That's Kitaro, and that's Mutsume. And I guess Nari was one up close and personal with the camera. <laughs> uh, May. Your voice, your, your acting is terrible, May. Well, sure, but it's been obvious this is what it is for a while now. You tell that girl. Yeah, I think I said that girl in the front of the picture was Naru. I, I meant Haruka. Everyone is. If you're a girl and you're someone important to the story, you're in love with Keitaro. But Shinobu has never been a realistic love interest for him. Really, only Mutsubi and Naru have been. <sighs> uh, how dare you interrupt my crying session? There's a lot more personality problems than just that, but... Uh... Long and hard, eh? <laughs> uh, I think there's more reasons that you could come up with than that. 
I really don't think... I really don't think she hates you, May. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> I think you really jumped to that conclusion and you shouldn't have done. Bath time! Yeah, how dare you cook a stuffed animal? How mean can you get? Mutsume. Yes, that's pretty obvious. Yes, she gave it to you. I swear these characters are all slow. What? What? It was was a name written on it? Yep, Mutsume. <laughs> there you go, there's your proof. Mutsume Otohime. So that was the 22nd episode of Love Hina. And this episode, it seemed pretty eventful. Okay. Mei is now here. She is now her sister. We found out not by blood, though, but by marriage. And she's pretty much here to get Naru to, to go back home. We kind of knew that at the end of last episode, but this episode definitely drove that point home. Now, she wants to kind of ship uh, Keitaro with Mutsume because she feels like that Keitaro is the only reason why she's there, and that if he's no longer an option for her, she'll happily go home. And she basically did a lot of scheming in the episode to as a means to that end, working together with Kitsune and all that stuff, but she's really not very subtle at all with her schemes, like she she would never survive in a show like Game of Thrones, I mean, just that no, she's just a she's not a very good schemer, but yeah she did her best, and pretty much we found out some things, like the fact that Naru was also, you know apparently new uh, Mutsume, like they interacted at least at some point because Mutsume gave her stuffed animal to Naru and we know that that, that 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 was hers because it had her name on it, written on it. At that point, Naruto couldn't deny it anymore. It was it was it was obvious. There was no well, maybe that's the case, but maybe it's not. No, once you see the writing on the stuffed animal, then no, yeah, that's you know that's the case. We also had some misunderstandings between Naru and May, the little sister. Apparently, May seems to believe that Naru left because of her because she hates her or whatever. Which I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on May's case about that because. It's it's common for kids to jump to conclusions like that, like when parents get divorced a lot of the time, the child will feel like it's their fault even if there's no rational reason to believe that it is. So I'm not gonna call that bad writing or anything like that. That is that does sometimes happen with kids. It's just unfortunate they she just kinda need to have a talk with, with Naro to clear this misunderstanding up to, so they can kind of move forward. Because obviously Naro loves May. I I that, I felt that was pretty obvious. Just not to to May so much. Obviously, Kitaro will talk to her about it, and that probably helped a lot, but I still think she should talk specifically to Naru about it. I must say that I did quite appreciate Mei's plan of making the rooms very hot to the point where Mutsumi strips off her clothes, because that, yeah, it's a pretty good strategy. Of course, it didn't pay off very well for anyone, really, but uh, because Naru, the cock block, just kind of shows up and ruins it. But that had potential to be a very interesting scene there for a while there. So, yeah, that was the episode. Thank you for watching, and thank you Snoki, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon, and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.